Oh man, I don't want to do this. Don't make me do this. Happy Halloween, you guys. Welcome back into the channel or welcome in if it's your first time here. We are doing a spooky special, but not just probably your average spooky game that you've heard of. Um, I have always loved playing the Silent Hill games. We've got Evil Within, we've done Madison, we've done Visage. There's a lot of spooky games out there I've done, not particularly on this channel, but on my Twitch channel, because look, it's no secret. I prefer to face scary stuff with y'all and having at least you guys there live to watch me and make me feel a little bit less alone. It's a whole nother beast sitting here recording it by myself because I don't normally just play horror games alone in the dark by myself. Um, but I figure if I can talk to myself while I'm recording these, I can face some scary stuff by myself as well. But we're not going with a conventionally scary game. You guys might see by the title and maybe you've never even heard of this game. I sure hadn't. I had not heard of this game at all. This was actually proposed by my editor. Thank you, Vert, um, for recommending this one. And when we were talking about doing a spooky special, we wanted to bring something a little bit different. We wanted to bring something that maybe isn't as widely known, something that was a little bit shorter so that my heart wouldn't explode because you guys will get to see a heart rate monitor as well. And so one thing that I find to be scarier than all, I don't like seeing gore. I don't even care for too many jump scares. But a successful scary game for me where I feel like I can still work my way through and not just want to pee my pants is a psychological horror. It truly is one of the worst types, I think, because you're playing tricks on yourself. It's not even the game. The game just has to sit back, relax. It's honestly the game in this one is playing tricks on me but it's really myself that's kind of my worst enemy through and through i'm pretty sure the game is just eating popcorn in the background watching me like just completely melt so this recording i've done this intro after playing the game so i did just want to give you guys some heads up there is going to be flash warning there is a lot of flashing happening um and then also it does get loud at some time. So for anybody using earbuds, you might wanna pull them out of some segments. I tried to turn it down a smidge, but it is just a little bit loud of a game. You're gonna see it's gonna be shot at a different, it's not full screen. It's gonna be a little bit um, kind of of a smaller window. So keep in mind with that. But other than that, I went into this game not knowing what to expect and I left just as confused as ever, but I thought it was a really cool take on it. So you'll hear my afterthoughts at the end of the video, but I ended up really enjoying this one in an unconventional way of how horror is normally done or how, um, I wouldn't say it's like a horror game. I'd say it's really just that thriller. It's that, um, darkness it's the fear your own fear of dark your own fear of like things that you know that start crawling out in your head it's um it's a little vague at times as well and so just be prepared but i want to hear y'all's theories on it i want to hear what you guys think about it so let me know in the comments what you guys liked about it if you thought it's what anatomy <laughs> hold on it's already starting. It's already thinking that my spooky ghost is scarier than me. My camera is supposed to pick up. Come on. My camera is supposed to pick up the most human thing, you guys. <laughs> and it's never me. Take that for what you will. All right, guys. I hope you all enjoy this spooky special. And again, happy Halloween. Oh, no. It's going to be so loud. A VHS. Oh. Okay. All right, we're just getting tossed into it. Okay, we're already in it, y'all. We are already in it. Are you serious? So we basically put in the tape of us doing this. Okay, okay. It is super dark. Do I have anything? I don't think I have anything. I can WASD to move around. Oh, no. All right. Weird pictures. Locked door. This reminds me so much of uh, the Halloween game. Oh. Couch. This has got to be a couch. We need to find a light, you guys. This is way too dark. TV. I can't interact with it. Do you guys hear that? Dog and a cat? Skeleton? I keep thinking I'm seeing something when you see the lines. All right, people working on a body, anatomy. 
definitely somebody on a table. Those don't even look like people around him, though. They look like almost the creatures from... Hmm... Uh, Amnesia. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I hate darkness. Uh, the doors are massive, you know? Like, they're very wide doors. Again, I'm guessing we can't go out? Yep. <laughs> Everything feels wide. Okay, we can't go there either. Why are these hallways so wide? Parts of the hand. Okay, we got the end of the hallway. No books on the bookshelf is the real crime here. Oh no. Okay. Hmm. Great fridge though. Beautiful fridge. And I'm guessing we can't get in the store, yeah. Okay. All right, let's do it. Pick up the recording. In the psychology of the modern civilized human being, it is difficult to overstate the significance of the house. Since as early as the Neolithic era, humankind has defined itself by its buildings. Buildings for worship, buildings for socializing, buildings for protection, even buildings for the commemoration of the dead. But of all the structures that mankind has invented for itself, there is little doubt that the house is that which it relies upon most completely for its continued survival. Huh. <laughs> oh, gosh. There is a tape in the dining room. Wait, I don't think we got in the dining room. Okay, guys, sorry. I'm just going to pause it for one second and just turn it down a smidge because I think it's coming across a little loud. And if there's any jump scares, we're going to blow our eardrums out. <sighs> I need some tea. I need some tea for my heart. Mm. Nope, nope, nope. Although I did like what they said about the house. It is true. There is something so integral about like a centerpiece of your life. And in a lot of ways, um, kind of like a home to go back to. I think that's why it's so idyllic getting to go back to your your family home, right? If, if you know, or or for, you know, people who come from a divorced family, I think it's very reasonable for that to be a dream and, and an inspiration as well to have some something like that oh shoot okay there's no i what i need to do here is remember there's no cause to be worried like we don't know the situation at all it is a lot of darkness but that doesn't mean that it has to be scary unless i make it scary in my head is that a potato or a brain okay second tape do i need to remove the other one the house is one of the key elements that separates modern humanity from its more primitive antecedents. Oh. No other creature goes to such lengths to create lasting, permanent shelter for itself, nor regards such shelters with such reverence and import. Or go to Target to buy stuff for of our modern age foster this tremendous sympathy toward their homes. Mm. There are many reasons, of course, but perhaps it is due in some small part to seeing them as a reflection of ourselves. Wow. There's a tape in the downstairs bathroom. I, oh, downstairs. Was there even a downstairs? Also, wait, maybe we should go into the other room that we opened. Um, that's an interesting concept. Like your house is a representation of you. I mean, very much when you have people over, we do worry about how, oh, I know where we are, the living room. Yeah, how people, like, see that. Wait, was that always there? Was there always, like, the dad chair? Mm. We do care a lot, sometimes too much, about how people perceive our home. That's not downstairs. Is this downstairs? Oh, I bet she was in the kitchen. Oh, that's the bathroom downstairs bathroom They're not as if we're going to the downstairs i see also i feel like we're kind of short the wallpaper though oh it's a wide toilet seat okay i'm going should we start closing doors we've already been in i'm gonna close this door okay the 
The anatomy of the house is such that this analogy is less superficial than at first it may seem. To carry it further, if we were to dissect a house as we might a human cadaver, we would find ourselves able to isolate and describe its various appendages and their functions in a decidedly anatomical fashion. There is even a fair number of direct comparisons to be drawn between those organs of a house and those of a human body. Really? You've got the heart of the house. You've got in the garage. Okay, I think I know where that is. I think it's right here. A lot of times in older homes, the gr Oh, I thought the garage is attached to the kitchen. Never mind. The heart of a home. What would be the garage? Is that your butt? What is that? <laughs> what part of your body is the garage? Uh, oh, lovely. Okay, I really like these. You got washer and dryer in the garage. It's a really interesting door. Okay, there's nothing else. Grab the tape, grab the tape, get out, get out. Okay. I'm on my way. It's the like feeling as if it's so quiet that it's like your brain is inserting things that aren't actually there. For example, let us examine the living room. Often the dominant space of a house is ground a level, as well as typically the center of activity in a well-populated home. The living room is very much the heart of the mm. house. While a human heart circulates blood to oxygenate the body's extremities, the living room circulates people, activity, communication. Huh. It is the room most likely to be found beating, as active and vivacious as its name would imply. The comparison is only strengthened when we consider also that the living room is most commonly the room to contain the fireplace, making it additionally Warmth. a locus of actual physical heat. Ah. That is, of course, before this was definitely pre-phones and everybody being perfectly content being in the room, not meeting up in the living room, just on TikTok or something. I just missed it. Where did it say that? Oh, no. Okay, we just have to open some of the doors because I don't know where it said the next one is. Okay, we can't go out there. I was completely looking elsewhere. Well, we know it's not in there because we've been in there. It's probably upstairs now. Or this one? No. This was the garage. That's so interesting. No banister for the stairs. Spiral. The upstairs are always the scariest. Why are there bugs? No. Oh, this is a big upstairs. Jellyfish? No. Mosquito? Okay, it isn't upstairs. So there must be another room. Can't believe I missed that. <laughs> I'm gonna torture myself with it. It wasn't the room next to the kitchen, so there wasn't another room, though. Was it the bathroom? Maybe there's a tape inside the living room because that's what it talked about. Boom. There you go. Okay, that makes the most sense. Although we don't have a fireplace in this one. I don't like this. Hmm. I keep going back. It is easy to think of the kitchen and dining room as the stomach or digestive stomach. system of a house. That makes sense. So this comparison is tenuous. By contrast, the function and analog of a bathroom should be immediately obvious. Ah, uh, of course! The hallways and corridors of the house are veins, providing circulation, coursing through the I was thinking brain. limbs, but yeah. A staircase bears more than a passing resemblance, both physically and symbolically, to, spine. to a spine. The windows of a house serve much the same purpose as eyes, and anyone who has ever rounded a bend or a long drive and come suddenly face to face with a tall, dark manor will tell you that it is difficult to shake the impression that the house, through its lightless windows, is a creature capable of vision and intelligence. Mm. On the stairs. On the stairs. Okay, but I'm going to need him to tell us what the garage is. I'm just kidding, I say garage. I just feel like... Alright, it's leading us upstairs now. Oh my gosh, this carpet. 
this cannot just be simply a lesson on how a house compares to the anatomy of a body. There's no way that that's the entirety of the game. The bedroom is perhaps the room that most eludes direct comparison in this fashion. At a stretch and allowing for a bit of poetic sympathy, it might be said that the bedroom is not unlike the human mind or mind. those parts of it which dictate thought and imagination. In the bedroom, dreams are dreamt. Oh, are that's ignited. true. Epiphanies are experienced in cold sweat at early hours. In the bedroom is where people invariably spend the majority of their time, though comparatively little of it whilst conscious. <laughs> that is such a small detail in the bedroom. In a bedroom, there are a lot of bedrooms. Um, that is certainly true. I always talk about that in reference to like why I invest in a good quality chair or bed. It's like those are the two areas in my home that I spend the most amount of time. I mean, it's like I've so rarely used some sections of my house that I don't find it necessary to like spend so much. But especially with a bed, like you spend the most amount of your life, like second to anything else, I would say sleeping. That is not that. It's so dark. What the heck? Does that look like little hands over whoever's sleeping? Okay, I do not like this. This is a creepy bedroom. Oh gosh, it's all perfect. Also, why is that painting so massive? I feel like things are trying to, like, crawl into the scene. The decor just does not make sense. Unless there's going to be a second level to this, like, after we get all the tapes, maybe there's... I don't know. What's the story lesson here? And yet, this analogy so is an incomplete one, for obviously the mind is an exceedingly complex thing. If the bedroom represents the thinking, dreaming part of the brain, then it is the basement that represents those lower, unconscious parts. Mm. The basement is dark. It is buried. It is a place full of cobwebs where memories are stored. A poignant comparison, truly. Often the unnerving uncertainty that comes with considering the deeper aspects of the human psyche is not unlike gazing down at the swimming blackness pooled at the bottom of a basement stairwell. It is a place we spend our childhoods filling with monsters that will lay for years in patient silence. It is a place that, barring some specific errand, we seldom ever want to go. Hmm. Isn't that the truth? Just a tape in the basement. Do you, if you ever grew up with a basement, then you know the horror of when your parent is like, go get X, Y, Z, especially if it was nighttime, daytime, it's scary enough as it is. Guys, I keep thinking like, I think my brain is playing tricks on me, but I truly feel like I see squiggly things in the dark. I'm going, I'm looking down the whole time, but I'm going. What is this? Okay. I can't. The basement holds too many horrors for me. Think of Pennywise. The dancing clown. Where is it? This is a massive basement. We should see like a faint light as soon as we get close to it. Mm. On the wall? Oh gosh. Where, where was the stairs though? Okay, there's a, are the stairs in the middle? I'm looking down, I don't care. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Get back up, get back up. Back up, back up, back up. Okay, we're closing this door. The basement's staying shut. Okay. Of course, this comparison, though appropriate, is a very heavy-handed one. And often the basement is little more than a storage space littered with the corpses of spiders and wood lice. While poets and psychoanalysts no doubt dread the thought of a dark basement, in truth, it is the bedroom, the waking mind, that place of dreams, 
Is actually the most frightening of all. In the master bedroom. Isn't that such an interesting thought? That your dreams could hold more horror than even what we imagine in nightmares. Although unless he's talking about dreams in the context of also dreams can include nightmares maybe. But what you don't bring light to, the unknown. I feel like often the unknown's the scariest. But it's so interesting how I'm not as scared in here, like in the main area. But as soon as I go to the basement or upstairs, I'm horrified. Um... Those squeaky. Get to a wall. Wait, it's so dark in here. Why is the wall red? Why is the wall red? Okay, now I'm going back down. I'm going back down. Wait, there's another. Wait. Wait a minute. Where am I? Okay, this is it. This is it. This is it. Okay, we've got a bedroom, and then there it is. There it is. There it is. Okay, okay. It's actually kind of it's just a red room. I'm out. Why is it upstairs now? Why is it upstairs now? What are these teeth? The dog's teeth, canines. Oh my gosh. What the heck? Wait, can we even get out? We don't even have a door. We don't have a door anymore. We have a window and, and nothing else. Right? Oh my gosh. We're stuck in here. It was here, in the bedroom, that we are at our most vulnerable. Each night we shut our senses to the world for hours at a time, trusting in the house to keep us safe until next we wake. <gasps> in this state of extreme vulnerability, we will spend something like 20% of our lives. Anything might stand beside us, watch us, Keep us company until dawn, and we would never perceive it. We can only pray that the house will not let such things carry on as we sleep. In this way, during these hours, the bedroom seems less like a mind and more like a mouth. For it is here that the house is most likely to betray us. It is here that we place ourselves most at the house's mercy and spend each night hoping that it will not bite down. That was it? That was... That was it? <laughs> okay, let's talk about that. <laughs> Alright, you guys. So that is not the end. Apparently, you're supposed to run the game several times to get it all. Oh, it's 1994. I didn't even see that. Wait, what is that noise this time? I did want to talk about that. I found that to be fascinating, what he had said in the bedroom, though. It is so true. Like, we so rarely think about how vulnerable we are, right? This is this home where I think that's why movies such as, like, The Strangers are terrifying. It's like this idea of people breaking into your home and, um, you know, especially if you were in the middle of sleeping or something, who knows what lurks by or what could break in or things like that obviously we we say that and it's like you would hear if somebody broke in but you are in your most vulnerable state when you're putting your trust in sleep and also in a home like what an interesting notion but okay i um i'm not quite sure what we're supposed to do Okay, it's here again, so let me see if I get the same same. In the psychology of the modern civilized human being, it is difficult to overstate the significance of the house. Since as early as the monastic era, humankind has defined the era of God. But of all the structures that mankind has invented for itself, there is little doubt that the house is that which it relies upon. This is the same for its continued survival. There is a tape in the dining room. 
Isn't this the same? But why is that noise happening? And wait, the dining room's different, right? Was there always these plates? What is happening? I feel like they're moving at a faster pace, too. <laughs> There's a table in the downstairs bathroom. Shut this. We're speed running through this. Wait, that wasn't there either. Things are not where they used to be. There is a tape door. Doors are unlocked. Doors are unlocked. Doors are out. There was not a window here before. Doors are unlocked. What the hell? Okay, that painting's the same. The garage? Well, we knew we went into the garage next, right? So it's gotta be down here. It was here. It was there. It's not here. So it's not the garage. Uh, maybe upstairs? Maybe in the- wait, 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 in the living room. It was the living room next, not the garage. It was the living room, wasn't it? What's different about the living room? That was the same. It's upstairs. It's gotta be upstairs then. I- I can't even give you guys my thoughts right now. I- there's like a massive part of me that feels like something's gonna jump out. Um. I don't wanna jump scare. We were never able to go in here before. We were never in there before. We never went in here before either. There's nothing in here. Soul to take. The Lord's Prayer. No, 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 no. We're keeping our face to the ground. There, the next tape. Okay. They look like spider legs. Let's go. Get the tape, get downstairs, close this. I'm- I'm keeping my face down. <laughs> what the hell? Now the darkness is starting to seriously play tricks on me. What is it? There's a tape in the living room. I... I don't even know what to say. That is not a normal tape, and I don't think this is like the game glitching out on me. I think this is all intentional. How does it know how many times you run the game? Because basically all it said was just keep 
turning the game. Like, it's meant to be played over and over again. Wait, I thought the living room was talking about the heart of the home. The hallways and corridors of the house are veins, providing circulation, coursing throughout its frame. A staircase bears more than a passing resemblance, right. both physically and symbolically, to a spine. The windows of the house serve much the same purpose as eyes, and anyone who has ever rounded a bend on a long drive and come suddenly face to face with a pale, dark manner will tell you that the house is a creature capable of. What now? What now? Uh... Um... I feel like I can't do this. I, I don't know how to describe it, but I feel like I can't... I... I think this is the last room that I was able to go into and I didn't go into it. I don't know how to describe this, but I, I don't... I don't like this. I don't want to I don't want to do this anymore. Sleep paralysis. What is that? The tape? Oh gosh, get downstairs. We never went in here to begin with. I don't know how to describe what this game is making me feel, but it's like, I guess maybe is it that anticipation that something's gonna jump at you or something's gonna happen and... Like, I don't... It's like the loud the noises. Is perhaps the room that most eludes direct comparison in this fashion. At a stretch and allowing for a bit of poetic sympathy, it might be said that the bedroom is not unlike the human mind, or those parts of it which dictate thought and imagination. In the bedroom, do, 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 do. I dream that there are teeth growing all over me, everywhere on me and in me, like cysts or bone spurs. They're loose, but I can't remove them because I have no hands. I look out through the bedroom window and I see a truck approaching. A young man steps out, approaches, and enters through the front door. His body is covered in swollen ticks the size of quarters. He's walking through the downstairs hallway and laughing. He begins urinating in the wall. Oh. He spits on the carpet. He's moving through the first floor, breaking and upsetting things. He goes to the basement and stands at the top of the stairs. I'm angry at him, so I slam the door and he falls down. I can feel his bones snapping. The ticks are bursting, oozing all black blood everywhere. I can feel them being ground up, dissolved and torn, splitting and shredding. I leave the door closed. I close my eyes and try to sleep. The teeth continue growing on me until there is nothing left of me but teeth. Um, so Maybe. It's dark. <sighs> no. I know. I don't know why I'm so terrified. Okay. So she imagined somebody coming into the home and... Oh no, I'm, I'm looking at... <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, let me see if that was the last... <laughs> Definitely different tape. Tommy? Does it say Tommy? What the hell? 
Okay, so apparently we're supposed to play it four times to get the whole picture of the story. I also just want to say, as we're talking about homes and protection and going insane and mad houses, um, <laughs> my Nest camera went offline while I've been playing this, and that is not... That doesn't feel good. Okay, we are waking up somewhere completely different this time. Everything is a lot more red. It's like screen tearing. Isn't that the... That's that picture with the... Oh, no! No. No, no, no. Okay, so we're starting in the main bedroom and... What are these tears? Okay, let's go find our tape and get the heck out of here. Are those teeth? What is that? Oh my... It sounds like footsteps, guys. Okay, it's here. It's here. Same, same. It won't even say where the next tape is. Okay, the tape was always in the dining room after, right? It was in the dining room after. What? Uh, the house is like glitching out. So now we're dealing with and the plates are falling. I bet you this person had so much fun making this though. Nothing new. After the dining room was a downstairs bathroom. Downstairs bathroom. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, that's going all sort of wonky wonkies. The table up there, the chair keeps freaking me out. What hurts? What hurts? Okay, where did we go next to you guys? Did we go to the garage? That's so creepy. We were never able to go here before. Oh, and we still can't. Okay. I feel like I hear something in my house right now and it's freaking me out. That's the same picture. Let's go to the garage. I can't, we gotta go upstairs. Hurts, what hurts? What hurts the most? Same thing in here. These screen terries look like spider legs, I hate it. <laughs> what is that? What is that? What the hell? There's another thing here. out. You can hear it still screaming. What was this one? Okay, big windows. Oh, that's not normal. There's our tape. There's our tape. Okay, let's get out of here. Oh, my heart. Oh, gosh. I don't know if... I, oh, I guess we do have to go back downstairs. So last time, the basement is what glitched us out. Maybe it's gonna be the upstairs that glitches it out this time. I just... <laughs> what am I supposed to do with that? Okay, basement's still locked. 
It's maybe the bedroom. I feel like I hear something breathing. Okay, go to the basement or go to the bedroom. Oh gosh. Back here, back here. It's not this bedroom. But then where is it? Wait, there's an initial room here. Ah, oh, but we can't get into it. So then where is it? Maybe it's moved into here? Mm -mm -mm. Living room, living room. I didn't go into the living room. Whoa, you can sprint? Wow. Yes, living room. Whoa, I didn't know you could sprint. That's kind of cool. Wee! It looks just like you're fast forwarding a tape. That's so cool. It kicked me out. What? Oh, fiddlesticks. Oh, no. You've got to be kidding me. Please, no. I'm looking down. The last tape's got to be in here somewhere. I... I'm not looking up. I'm not looking up. The last tape, where is it? Where... <gasps> There is an important distinction that must be drawn between the words deception and vivisection. A distinction that would appear to be lost on you. Distinction. Your purpose was to listen, and yet at every turn you have pried, you have prodded, and you have interfered. Interfered? Have you not been paying attention? Did it not occur to you that as an organism existing within a greater organism, your intrusion would be felt? And still you harass. And now, like the wayward spider who witlessly settles upon a sleeper's tongue, you will be swallowed. Because the truth is this. When a house is both hungry and awake, every room becomes a mouse. What is hap- Every room becomes a mouth? To devour? Never? We're still in it? What? How am I supposed to get out? Oh! <laughs> oh my gosh! Never come back? Leave now and never come back. Uh, okay, I have so many thoughts. The hard part is, is that, okay, okay, we're going to talk about all of this at the end. We're going to do the last chapter, then we're going to have a discussion time, guys. Okay. Okay, so while there is nothing I would hate more than going back into this house, especially after it literally told us not to come back, I'm going to do it for you guys. So don't say I never did anything for you guys. Oh. Oh my! What happens to a house when it is left alone? When it becomes worn and aged? When its paint peels and its foundations begin to sink? When it goes for too long unlived in? What does it think of? What does it dream? How does it regard those creatures who built it? Brought it into existence only to abandon it? When its usefulness no longer satisfies them? It may grow lonesome. It may stare for long hours into the darkness of its own empty halls and see shadows. And it's like me, John, as it thinks, here, here's someone again, I'm not alone. And each time it is wrong. Mm. And the hurt starts over. 
it may find itself, inventing ghosts to walk its floor, making friends with its shadow puppets, laughing and whispering to itself at the end of some quiet cul-de-sac. The last it may go angry. Its basement may fill with churning acid like an empty stomach. Oh. And its gorge may rise as it asks itself through clenched teeth, what did I do wrong? I want to see that part. It may grow bitter. It may grow hungry. So hungry and so bitter that its scruples dissolve and its doors unlock themselves. Yeah, they were, weren't they? While a house may hunger, it cannot starve. And so, in fever and anger and loneliness, it may simply lie in wait. Doors open. Shades drop. Hallways empty. Something's gonna pop out of the shadows, I know. Hungry. No. <laughs> Is that it? Come on. It's just the darkness is so dark, like it... <laughs> Getting ready to like punch somebody that comes out. That's gotta be it. Right? That's it. Nothing's happening. So what? Okay, I have so many thoughts to all of this. I really do. I think that's it. I think it said the last tape is you on the floor in the basement. Because I had to, I was so worried they have it in the folder because they know that people are going to get confused. If, if you just play one time, it doesn't make sense. You have to play all of them. Okay, I think that's it. Right? But it always shuts off when it's over. got to be done. Right? I'm going to give it 10 more seconds and if it, yeah. And then we're out. Then we're out. Huh. I'm really trying to do stuff and nothing pops up. So I think that's the end of the game. Okay, well, actually, we'll start on the screen anyway, and let's just talk about this. This is a perfect, actually, spot to... So there's four times that we've gone through, and it does say to go through four times. Um, the first time is pretty normal. That's when we're picking up all of those tapes, and it's talking about the comparison of a house to the anatomy of a person. And so, especially now that I've heard this tape at the very end, I guess the conclusion is that this this house was abandoned, and so... It's almost like trying to say that the house grew like a consciousness and it is like an entity and it feels like it, its heart beats when there's people playing in the living room. You've got the dreams, um, the bedroom, like the mind of it and stuff. And so it really is like, at least how I'm looking at it is it's like this home has taken on like um, its own, like it's its own creature. It's its own living, breathing thing and it's funny because homes do often like we talk about them like almost like that where they are this breathing piece where there's creaks and there's cracks and even that talked about how when a house has been abandoned for a while almost they'll make up ghosts or things to make them feel like they're being used again and um it's interesting because I guess when you think about homes it's like 
so often we attach so many beautiful memories to a home and then we just pick up and we go somewhere else and obviously the memories are often tied to that object to that home but you never lose those memories they might get triggered more by being in the presence of that home but yeah maybe so often how homes are mistreated i don't think the whole game is just trying to tell you to take care of your house and love your house um but i wonder what the inspiration for this was i mean it is kind of a cool take on looking at an abandoned home and i think that's why i remember the one tape that talks about the hitchhiker or the not a hitchhiker but it was like a guy that came out of a truck and i think it was talking about how he his bones hit every single stair and it like got happy by that and that makes sense i think that's when i started to feel like we're hearing it from the perspective of the house and the house was very empty so maybe it's all it's just a game that's playing on your fear of the darkness for sure like this one was particularly psychological because anytime you play somebody in the darkness like me looking at the screen right now i'm thinking of a million things that could be creeping out of that darkness right now um hearing a, a tape tape player right we think about tape players and we actually kind of put i think a little bit of a haunted feeling next to them as well so yeah, just very unnerving. I feel like that's the best way I can describe this game. It was perfect for Halloween because I don't really like like full jump scares, guys. I've played Madison before. That was like probably one of my least favorite games ever. I'm not really good when it comes to jump scares, when it comes to loud noises. Like you saw like the number one scare for me was when the tape did that loud noise when I started to walk down to the basement because I thought it was going to be quiet and then it like bangs and that's what like jolts you you're like oh gosh um same thing with horror movies like anytime i see horror movies it's often not the action that pops up on the screen or the scary face of a creature but the sound like that shearing like a lot of times they use violins like an insidious um it's oftentimes the sound the most and i like that they used a void of that so there was just not a lot of sound happening around you and then when there was it just like gets your heart be pumping or how the house is opening so it was like haunted in the sense of like it's opening its doors it's moving the tape around and you're having to discover this and then it told us not to come back so i think what we can probably safely assume is that this was us getting killed or the last one maybe oh okay maybe like the last one was it consuming us because there were teeth in the basement and it was talking about how at some point when a house has been abandoned for so long it like each room can become a mouth to devour you in so i guess we can only assume that whatever or whoever we were moving around and stuff we just got devoured by the house but very like i haven't done a whole lot of psychological horror games in fact on this youtube channel this is the first one that i think you guys will see that i made exclusively for youtube i've played through madison i played through visage on on um twitch before but i haven't really done a lot of these because i'm bad enough doing them with y'all when i'm live streaming let alone by myself when i'm sitting here and i'm like i don't want to do it. <laughs> which it should be kind of the same thing but sometimes i will say that having like a live chat there can help give you the strength to feel like you're not so alone walking through it um i don't know how many more of these will do this one did my head in especially in the second part knowing that you have to keep playing the game multiple times in of itself is a technique for horror and terror because you're like oh no here we go again okay what's going to be different okay that's different and then you start like freaking yourself out and then there were more terrors and then it all turned red and um then this last tape where you're not even able to move and you're just listening to it finally you're not able to move around and the house is just making you listen to its perspective um is interesting all of its own so I don't know. Let me know your thoughts, feelings. This was a super quick, special October Halloween special. Happy Halloween, you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Um, and yeah, let me know if you guys have other good, scary suggestions. Um, it's been a while since we played through something a little bit different than whatever I'm doing usually at like main mainstream at the same time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you guys in the next video which will be spider-man don't worry no more psychological horror for at least 365 days <laughs> thank you guys bye youtube